Welcome in, everybody. It's the coach. This is Madden 20 on EA Sports. Coming up, we'll see a three-time Pro Bowler, Derek Carr, leading the Oakland Raiders as they match up with Deshaun Watson and the Houston Texans. I'll see you again with scores and updates at halftime. But for now, it's my distinct pleasure to hand things over to our broadcast team. It's Brandon God and Charles Davis. Gentlemen. Okay, Coach. Well, this place can get downright loud when the roof is closed, and that's the situation here today at NRG Stadium in Houston, Texas. The scene from a few moments ago, this crowd enthusiastically cheering on their Texans as they emerge from the locker room. And we're just about ready for football as the Texans get set to match up with Derek Carr and the Oakland Raiders. From up top, I'm Brandon Gordon. Charles Davis, as always, with me as well. And CD, defenses better be on their toes in this one because we got two quarterbacks who love to throw the football, and they throw it very well. Over 4,000 yards each in the previous season. So what you're saying is, if you're a defender, hope you're prepared properly. Hydrated, stretched, be on your toes, as you said, because the ball's coming your way. the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away this fielded at the two and not a bad return here he gets it out to the 25 yard line as Deshaun Watson brings out the Texans offense let's discuss week six what a game Houston and Kansas City Houston winning at 31 24 matchup obviously at two of the NFL's young guns two guys from the 2017 draft class and Watson and Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, and Watson went 12th overall. Patrick Mahomes 10th, because you remember Kansas City traded way up to get him. And you remember what Andy Reid said the week of the game? I really liked Deshaun Watson. I loved Patrick Mahomes. And he meant no disrespect with that, but you and I both know that Deshaun Watson heard that and said, okay, I'll show you. You should have taken me 280 yards and a touchdown and two rushing touchdowns, which helped provide the margin of victory. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. From the gun, here's Watson. Stepping up, he's going to keep it. He'll have a first down past the 40. As they finally wrangle him in at the 48. Deshaun Watson, so multidimensional, able to scramble for the first. Partner, it's often the man coverage is easier for a quarterback to run against. You get your receivers going downfield, those guys are staying with them, and oftentimes they have their back to the quarterback, which opens up a lot of space and room, and they don't even know that he's taken off with it. What a big-time pickup on that play. They'll run on first down. It's Johnson shedding the tackler, and it gives him some room. And he's going to have this down deep into Oakland territory. A big run there by Johnson. Give him 42 yards on the ground. So they had him bottled up, able to make a man miss, and then boom, off to the races. And it's how he made him miss. A little bit of strength, too. Had to work through contact to get him off of him. And then once he did that, now he put his agility to use and took off. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit him, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Here's Johnson. And he's going to ball his way down to about the one-yard line. It'll be a pickup of eight and a good first step there with second and goal coming up. The impressive opening drive continues and just space being created by those guys up front. We're seeing this the same way, aren't we? We are seeing an offensive line as this game gets started, as it starts to unfold, that they are dominating the line of scrimmage. On second and goal, Watson, that is caught. Hopkins for the Texans touchdown. 
A one-yard touchdown pass. And the Texans take it all the way down the field and score on the opening drive. And all about timing there on that short slant, Charles. Exactly right. That was timed up so well. The route, the throw, touchdown. Kaimi Fairbairn on for the extra point. And the Texans take a 7-0 lead. Five plays there on that drive. And it results in the Texans finding the end zone. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbair now to kick it away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. So here are the Raiders under head coach John Gruden in his second go-round. They're led out by a man whose family name is known very well in this town. This is Derek Carr. So there is history. All right, you can't help it. He might have been younger, but you do soak up the history of what went on there, and now he's in that city trying to beat that team. Car now on first down. The open man here, Renfro. The completion good for three, and it's second down. A look now at the Oakland offense. And there's offensive tackle Trent Brown signed away from New England in the offseason on a four-year, $66 million deal to protect his new quarterback in Oakland, Derek Carr. No stranger to the Bay Area. First three years in the league were with San Francisco as a 49er. He can play left or right tackle. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. Carr going to throw. Complete to Jones. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. A gain of 13. It's a first down. This game, this matchup, means a little more to the Carr family. Derek Carr's brother David, of course, the first overall pick in 2002 by these Houston Texans. Spent five years as the Texans starter, and then he would eventually spend six more years as a backup in the league at various spots before calling it a career. Throw from Carr, complete to Renfro. And he'll be out of bounds up near the 45 at the 44. The defensive crew for the Texans. Here's a look. Many times as we open the game, we talk about guys who are drafted in the first round, but how about the undrafted players? In this case, safety to Sean Gibson, who's made the most of his time in the NFL, becoming a starter in the league, and since 2012, has 20 interceptions, the most for undrafted players in that time frame. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. They run it with a rookie from Alabama, Josh Jacobs. And oh, this Texans defense, they're all charged up now. They stop him behind the line for the second straight play. That's about as good as a linebacker can diagnose that play, isn't it? It certainly is, and what he did really well is that while he was diagnosing, he got his feet in motion without actually going anywhere and taking a false step that he had to make up later. He read it, got his feet in motion, and then he just took off and made the play. And the Texans have an extra defender in the secondary now on third down. Shotgun now for Carr. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. You hear the calls for a penalty, but I just don't think so. I think in this situation, the defender was making sure his guy couldn't hold on to the football. So I don't see anything that warranted a flag. No, I'm with you. There was contact, but I'm happy they kept that flag in the back pocket. On fourth down, A.J. Cole comes on to punt. DeAndre Carter is deep for the Texans. Yeah. 
And a nice job here to down this one right on the five-yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line, absolutely ideal. From that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five, superb. As the Texans take the field here again, I, I'm, you know, I'm looking down at the AFC South right now. Houston at four and two, Colts three and two, the Jags and Titans two and four. This is going to be very intriguing as the season unfolds. It certainly is, and think about the upcoming schedule now for Houston because they're at Indy, division rival, and they'll be battling for first place down the stretch. Home to Oakland, and let's face it, that game has changed dynamics, hasn't it? We thought that was going to be a pretty easy victory for them when the season started. No longer Oakland playing pretty good football, and then they head across the pond to face the Jacksonville Jaguars, another division game. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Watson. Flushed out right. And he's tackled a yard short of the marker. Good gain of nine on first down. On second down, Johnson. And he'll be taken down at the 46-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Getting the sense, Charles, are going to put a big emphasis this afternoon on the run game. And why not? What we're seeing so far, working pretty well from them. And here's the best part. We always talk about the best performers do their job when the lights come on. I think he likes natural light best. Here's Watson. And he's going to have the hook up to QT. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. The catch and run, good for 18 and a first down. Of course, the catch was nice, but how about what happened after? Able to stay on his feet and gain all that additional yardage. So many of these slot guys, I think, have running back in their background. So here's a first and 10 now in Raider territory at the 36. Johnson. And he's going to get this inside the 30. 10 yards there, good enough for a Texan first down. One thing's for sure, this defense has to figure out how to stop the ground game. He's eating them up here in the first quarter. It looks like they have to go to different forces, aren't they? The conventional things aren't working too well. So I remember a coach of mine saying way back when, when a back's having a great game, you've got to get the ball out of his hands. See how far he can run without the ball. And what he meant was takeaways, knock it loose, because maybe you can't just stop him with just regular tackling. They'll run it with Johnson. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. Carl Joseph up from his safety spot to make the play. Ready for the second quarter from Houston. It's the Texans in possession of the football as they're looking at a second down and nine to go. On second and nine, Watson. It's complete to Fuller. And they will eventually get him down, but he's inside the five all the way to the three. 22 yards there, a first down. One of the feature points of the end route is being able to make a nice throw to the middle part of the field. And for a quarterback, that's one of the better throws and better looks that he'll get. But he has to be careful not to wait too long and let his receiver wander into some tough territory. If he's late with the ball, he can get his receiver hit and hit hard. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he fights his way into the end zone for a Texans touchdown. A three-yard touchdown run. And the Texans push further out in front. 
Second effort there, he was determined to find pay dirt, and he did. I think that was a great example of what coaches talk about, a back that runs behind his pads, and he uses pads to get him into the end zone. Fairbairn now to add the extra point. And it's good to make it 14-0. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And it ends with a three-yard scoring run. So after the touchdown, here's Fairbear now to kick it away. This fielded at the two. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. And now Oakland ready to take the field. Already down two touchdowns here in the first half. This becomes a pretty important drive, doesn't it? It certainly does, and a lot of the teams script plays. We know that, right? They, they have a script to start the ball game, and typically those scripts go between 12 and 24, 25 plays. Down two touchdowns early, probably not very deep into their script. I think that they'll stay with it. I don't think they'll abandon it just yet and try and generate some offense on this drive. Anything, at least three points get that zero off the board. Carr with a play fake to Jacobs. Rush coming, and he's taken down. Bradley Roby, the ex-Buckeye, with a corner blitz in the sack. Well, someone's been up to the task so far in this game. They are already up a couple of scores, Brandon, and guess what? I think they're just going to pin their ears back now and get upfield and get after the quarterback. Been such an impressive first half to get that lead. And the Raiders following the sack, looking up at a third and long. Working from the gun, it's Carr. And this will be caught. Tyrell Williams. And he'll be brought down at the 34, well short of the first down marker. Just a five yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks, don't let them get there, and they rallied and made the tackle. Here's A.J. Cole now as he's on to punt for Oakland. And a great job here. This is going to turn out to be a beauty. This is marked down at about the three-yard line. That is how you flip field position. That's an absolute bomb of a punt. Downs it inside the five-yard line. Absolutely ideal. From that position, you're hoping to get it down inside the 15, inside the five. Superb. And now out comes Houston. It's been a good first half so far. They're up 14 to nothing. Points here, they could really put them in command before intermission. Yeah, and it's all well and good what they're seeing and how they're feeling right now. But this is the NFL. How many times have we watched 14 to nothing leads evaporate and quickly? So how, do we, how have we seen them combat it? Continue to run your offense, but don't back off at all. Don't start looking at the clock. Don't start thinking about, hey, just take care of the football. Keep attacking. Usually the best way to maintain control. Watson throwing quickly to Hopkins. That catch good for five. It's third down. That's a gain of five. Brings up 
And the Raiders call on a nickel set for third down. Watson now going to run the option right. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. Tough sledding. They lose a yard there on third. I don't think there's any doubt that if it's me, I'd be really cautious about continuing to call this play because you got to know, defenders, if they get a free shot at the QB, they want to take it, and they want to take it big. And they got it there on the option play for a loss. On fourth down, here's Brian Anger now to kick this one away. Back deep for the Raiders, Dwayne Harris. And it's fielded at the 34. Well, he wasn't too far from breaking that officially. Give him 15, and the Raiders will take over now first and 10. The Raider offense now making their way toward the huddle, and they're in a bind early here, down 14-0. Are you worried at this stage or still too early? You're worried. You're just trying not to transmit it to the rest of your team. You want to make sure that they stay positive, but at the same time, you're wondering, how are we going to move the football? What do we have on this play sheet that can work? Get back to basics is usually your answer. And make sure you find the guy who can move the ball fastest for you if you just get it in his hands. Yeah, still second quarter. You get points on the board here. I think you're feeling okay. Those passes out that far wide always make you hold your breath a little bit. Felt like it was in the air for a while. What it does is it allows a defender to gain some ground, come from a long distance, and have a chance to affect the pass. On second down, Jacobs. And he goes across midfield and down into Houston territory. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll set up a third down. 24th pick in the spring by Oakland was Josh Jacobs. Only rushed for 640 yards last year at Alabama, but when you consider the offensive depth chart they had, it makes it understandable. So young, won't turn 22 until February, and they're really hoping that the veteran presence of 30-year-old Doug Martin can be a guiding light for Jacobs. And this is going to be intercepted. Picked up by Justin Reed. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Partner, when you're playing cover two, this is like a tag team for the safeties. Each of them gets a half-field responsibility. Their job is to stay as deep as the deepest receiver in any zone, read the football, and go make a play. In this case, the free safety made the best play, an interception. comes a Houston offense as they get set to take over here. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, realize it hasn't worked <laughs> Go to so something well, else. And maybe try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. And that's exactly what you want on a first down run. Pick up five yards, bring up second and five. The defensive line, though, they've got to figure out a way to out leverage the guys up front because the offensive line is winning at the point of attack. On second down now, it's Johnson. And he'll be taken down after a short gain as that takes us to the two-minute warning. Two minutes to play, first half. It's 14 to nothing. A reminder, coming up at halftime, Jonathan Coachman will join us from Orlando with our halftime report. But business to take care of before we get there. A two-minute drill before the coach's two-minute drill. This is Johnson. He's got it. Give him six yards, and they do convert on third. Third and four, he did just enough, and I mean just enough to move the chains. And that's all you're looking for, right? Just want to keep the drive moving. You don't need the big play there. Just get to that marker that you described, and he was able to do just that. Watson in the offense going to come up first and ten, and he's completed all seven of his passes thus far. Watson now to throw. A 
open man is QT, complete. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. First down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. Now Watson. And the catch made by Johnson. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. 12 yards there and a first down. Couple of first downs on the drive already. As they'll go from the 47 now on first down. And now we won't see a play on first down. We're going to get a timeout instead. As they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. First and ten, Watson. Open man, the tight end fouls. No gain there on the completion, second and ten. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. Had the completed pass, but for no gain, stopped right at the line, so it's second and ten. Again, it's Watson. He's got his tight end. It's Fells. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little game. Now the Texans will use one of their two remaining timeouts as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. This will be play number seven on the drive. Third and a yard. To the air yet again, Watson. And that'll be incomplete. Well, they took their shot all right, but it comes up empty, and it's fourth down. They're going for a receiver there. Already has one touchdown in this first half, a second one not to be. I like where their headspace is, though. I mean, I really like the thought process, right? You got a guy who's already scored one, right? You want to go back to him, continue the hot hand, and make them adjust to you defensively. I like what they were trying to get done, even though they weren't successful. Bill O'Brien, an offensive mind, and he's going to trust his offense here. They're going for it on four. To throw is Watson. Got an open man. It's QT. They're able to keep the drive alive. Seven yards that time, and the decision to go for it proves to be a good one. We always talk about big-time players make big-time plays in big-time moments. I think that fourth down qualified. That was a heck of a throw. Watson in the offense going to come up first and ten. And he's six of seven now on this drive. Watson looks to throw again. Throw left side, complete to QT. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. A big one there for the Texans, 18 yards. The Texans going to signal for their third and final timeout as they stop go. it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. Kaimi Fairbear now to attempt the Texan field goal. From the left hash, it's a 36-yard attempt. The kick by Fairbairn is good. 
And the lead will grow. It's now 17-0. No one attempted or made more field goals than Fairbairn last year. He was 37-42. And they were grateful for every one of those that put three points on the board. But I guarantee you, Bill O'Brien, the head coach, is thinking to himself, we need to use them a lot less in 2019. Let's make sure we score some more touchdowns. Fairbairn now following the made field goal. He'll send this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And not wanting to risk anything here late in the half, he'll just take a knee and they'll bring the football out to the 25. 13 seconds, the time remaining in the half as they come up on first down. Now a carry for Jacobs. And an anxious moment or two there, but they do get him down. Now a timeout taken. Perhaps a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. From the gun, it's Carr. That's complete to his tight end, Waller. And we're going to get a timeout. With two seconds remaining in the second quarter. So with two ticks left here in the half, on is the field goal unit. From the left hash, it's an even 50-yard attempt. The kick by Carlson is good, and that will do it for this first half. So we have come to halftime in what's already a two-touchdown game. As we'll get you over to Orlando, where standing by is Jonathan Coachman. He has our EA Sports halftime report. Okay, right, Brandon. Thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to this slimmed-down version of the EA Sports halftime report. This one has certainly been one-sided to this point. It's a two-touchdown difference as the teams have already come back out onto the field for the second half. So let's get you back out as well to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. Teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This fielded at the two. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. Now comes the Raiders offense. They'll go on offense first to start quarter number three. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder and puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. That was a good run, and it got to the second level. And what I mean by that is that's where the linebackers usually play, first level being the defensive front, last level being the secondary. But the strong safety position ended up making the tackle, and oftentimes we call them a hybrid. Combination defensive back, combination linebacker. We saw the linebacker make the stop. Now a deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. Darren Waller, the intended receiver, and it's third and short. But has not been the best game for him. But he definitely tried to get by with a little help from his friend there, trying to create a big play. Couldn't do it, fell incomplete. But you're right, hasn't been a banner game here in the second half, just trying to get going. Big thing is trying to keep confidence up and continue to fire. 
Uh-oh, he is going nowhere as he is enveloped behind the line. They end up getting stuffed twice after that nine-yard gain back on first down. I apologize in advance, partner, but the v feeders on the interior of this D-line, you just know they were licking their chops on third and short. And yes, they were rewarded with a tasty dish, stuffing that one short of a first down. Here's A.J. Cole now, as he's on to punt for Oakland. And a nice job here on special teams. This will be down inside the 10 at the 8-yard line. Absolutely love the flexibility of these punters. Their leg drive, able to get it way up in the air. And that allows their punt team to get down there and down it inside the 10 because they've had some time. DeAndre Hopkins and the rest of the offense heading back onto the field. Sort of a slow and steady game so far, but reliable for him here in this third quarter. Sounds like we're describing a possession receiver, right? The one that finds a way to make the big catches, the ones that break the backs of defenses, keep first downs accumulating. I think he's that and maybe a little bit more. Yeah, he's been pretty good so far. We'll see if he can make this good game a great game. All that practice time came to fruition on that play. All those timing routes that they work on through training camp, OTAs, mini camp, and just regular season. They got it done on that one. An out cut, ball was delivered, and picked up the completion. Now a 10th carry for Johnson. And he'll take this up only to about his 18-yard line. Josh Morrow on the stop. Pretty good job defensively. Thought he was going to get it, but they knew where that marker was, and they stopped him just short of it. What it does is emphasize that strategic football and situational football is not just played on the offensive side, is it? Defense understanding, as you noted, where the first down marker was and making sure they didn't get there. Again, it's Johnson. He's got a first down and more past the 30. That good for 19 and a first down. We've seen him break off a big run already in this game, and for a second, that one looked like it might be another. Yeah, I think that any defense would say, look, we can't let him get to the second level because sometimes he'll break off the big run on his own, but oftentimes you get additional blocking at the second level, which gets you deeper into the secondary. Now on the heels of that run by Johnson, here's another first and 10. Now a play fake, and it's Watson. And that going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. That's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. Line of scrimmage, again the 37 as they line up second and 10. Throwing again is Watson. Screen play, Johnson. And that play is blown up, losing yardage back at the 35. The tally there, minus two yards, brings up third down. Now that screen there on second down certainly didn't develop how they had hoped. Is that one they should have even tried, or is that one the quarterback sticks in his pocket? I think the latter. I like what you said there, because trying is one thing. We can second guess just about every call. But in this case, when you realize it is broken down, just throw it at the feet of your intended receiver so that no one can pick it off, right? You don't have the ball tipped up in the air, and you come back and try and pick up the first down on third down. That way you don't lose any yardage. Now throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. Had to pass there, third and long on your own side of the field. Just couldn't come up with anything. That's why teams always talk about having to win the early downs, meaning you've got to gain yardage and set yourself up for third and short because when it's third and long, the odds go down significantly trying to pick up the first down, even throwing the football. Here's Brian Anger now as he'll punt it away for the second time. And that one hits at the seven, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. The Raiders offense now, they trot back out and down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. 
sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points. Big time. No gain on the dump off. It's second down. Well, that was a simple throw and catch, but even with that completion, zero yards gained, so they're behind schedule on down and distance. I think they were hoping to get it to him. He could make a man or two miss, but that window closed quickly. The rush defense stout on first down. Here's second and 10 from the 20. From the gun, Carr. And he will not get away from the pressure here. Carr taken down. So one quick, easy analysis about why they've struggled so far. They keep putting themselves in third and long situations. They just took another sack right there. And the offensive film session tomorrow may be a little longer than it normally is. <laughs> Not a lot of positive grades will be handed out thus far. After the sack, they'll come up now third and long. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised to see them run the ball here just to try and get some space. Instead, they go empty backfield as they'll look to throw. And now the ball's out. Carr lost it. Fumble. So it goes as a fumble, but the key thing, not a fumble loss. Yeah, that, that stat's big, isn't it? I mean, it, I remember watching teams play. The ball might be on the ground a number of times during the game, but the other team doesn't get it. That's a huge difference in the ball game. And in this case, they were able to retain possession. Here's A.J. Cole now as the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. So a short drop, but he's able to get it out, and this is a good kick. Here comes Carter. Well, that'll be put in the books as a 53-yard punt, and the Texans will take over with a first and 10. We get a glance at Duke Johnson as he heads back out onto the field. He is knocking on the door for 100 yards in this ball game. And it's so important. It doesn't seem like it's that big of a deal. Just short of it, a little bit over. A little bit over feels better to everyone. Offensive line, running back, team totals. Just something magical about breaking that barrier. And he's right there on the doorstep now. 15 yards, the Texans pick up the first down. I like watching the wide receiver screen because it's a real teamwork play. Because guess what? The guy catching the ball, he'll get all the credit. But how about the people up to block in front of him, either fellow receivers or offensive linemen? That makes that play a really nice timing play, and sometimes it can break big. First down, Watson, over the middle, it's Fells. Flash the stick skills, but didn't get a ton from it. Stop short of the 35. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Let's just break this down and make it pretty simple. Key to the drag route, letting the play develop, finding the hole in the defense, and giving your athlete, yes, athlete, a chance to make something happen once he has the ball in his hands. On second down. It's Johnson, and this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. Is that 19? Hey, that kid reached traps. Let's go. Now it's Watson, a bootleg. And the throw there going to be incomplete. Perhaps they overthought this one a little bit. They've been running it real well on this drive, and it was third and short, okay? They decide to throw the football incomplete. Yeah, they might have thought just a little bit too hard about that play selection.
So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. From the left hash, this will be a 52-yard attempt. And he missed it. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. Now listen, now no kick from 50-plus is a gimme, but here you're indoors in a dome. You'd think ideal conditions. Yeah, and it's one that he would expect himself to make, not just us expecting him to make it. Over the years, my theory is very simple. The athletic ability of kickers continues to get better and better. Check their backgrounds. They were all county, all state, and other positions, not just soccer players. These guys expect themselves to be great as well. They've got good starting field position as they come up here first and 10 at their own 42. Carn out of throw. Got his man. That's Tyrell Williams. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. 14 yards is the pickup there at a Raider first. To win any route, you've got to break down the defender. And that's exactly what happened here on this really nicely executed curl route. Try to get one more in here before the quarter breaks. Here's Jacobs on first and 10. And he'll go down, and that will do it for the third quarter of action. Three quarters have come and gone. We'll return with more after this break. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Derek Carr, three fourth quarter comebacks for the Raiders last year, and they only won four games total, so they've got some experience dealing with tight ones. To throw his car. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. So he can't hang on. And as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know. But you're going to get hit anyways, might as well hold on to the ball. All right, you know a coach said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player. No chance at all. Way easier said than done. On the draw, Richard working his way for a gain of seven to the 26. And that was a really nice run there to bring up third and short. After the incompletion on first down, it's awfully nice to have a running back that you can hand it to and put you back in a good situation. The Raiders on third down. A pretty woeful 0 for 5 thus far. This time it's third and three. Shotgun now for Carr. And tight coverage there. It's knocked away incomplete. Really good, smart play by the defense, understanding third and short, guarding the first down sticks, and being able to make a play on the football and bat it down. All right, they're going to try and keep hope alive here on fourth down. They're going for it. They'll go for it. It's Carr. And no, it's incomplete. The Raiders try it on fourth down, but to no avail. And this Texans defense stands tall. So they really needed points here in a two-score game. Could not come away with anything there on fourth. And while we know they're a little bit discouraged here, they can't check out of this game. You and I have called a good number of games over the course of our career where we've seen these types of situations. Teams get the ball back, and that miracle does occur. So they can't let that dream go just yet. They have to get stout on defense here. Yeah, right now, really hoping for a turnover. And now Carlos Hyde in the game. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and 10 coming up. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. And what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. Throwing on second down. Watson. And he'll find Aikens there. Complete. And he works three. And they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. Good work after the catch, going to net him 23 and a first. It's so important to tackle well against these guys, but you and I both know that's easier said than done when the guy you're trying to tackle looks like this guy. And it's usually going to take more than one man to get him down, and it did right there. So 
So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. Here's Watson. He finds Hopkins complete. And he'll go down inside the 45 before going out of bounds. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Going to run the sweep here. This is Hopkins. And this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. This is how offensive coordinators earn their money. He throws ahead of the curve after first down. Got seven yards first down play, but then you get stuffed there on second down, maybe just a yard out of it. Now your advantage has evaporated. The Texans on third down. They've converted just two for six thus far. Here it's third and two. A shotgun snap for Watson. And intercepted. Maybe the turning point they need. Picked up by Gary and Conley. 20. And he takes this one back into the end zone. And the Raider defense delivers a score. Well, don't change that channel just yet. This one may have gotten a bit more interesting. Put down the remote, put down the clicker. This one looked like it was over. It looked like they were ready to seal the deal. But in doing so, by pitching it around a little bit, it cost them. We could have a great finish. Now for the extra point, Daniel Carlson. And it's up through the goal post. It's 17-10. A heck of a play there defensively, getting the interception, navigating his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So they throw the pick six. They'll get another shot at it now as this one's in the air. This will be taken in at the one. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. The Texans offense now. They get set to head back onto the field. They're holding on right now to that slim advantage in a one-score game. And you hear a lot about two-minute offense and four-minute offense. Obviously, the four-minute offense applies here. How do they run that effectively? Yeah, really what the four-minute offense is is you're just trying to grind the clock. So you want consistent gains, steady gains. Doesn't have to be big plays, but it has to be plays that gets first downs and keeps the ball away from your opponent. But certainly throwing the ball is in the mix here. It certainly is. Just make sure that you're careful with it and again get those first downs keep possession of the football four receivers now three to the right one to the left second down and four Watson now to throw he's got four Sheds a second man. He's building up some momentum isn't he the catch and run good for 18 and a first down Probably the only thing he did wrong there was go out of bounds, nursing this fourth quarter lead. You want to stay in, eat the clock. Yeah, you got to love the effort, the catch, the extra yardage, but you got to know the situation. Stay in bounds, young man. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. Let's go, D. Tighten up. Now Watson. Stepping up, he'll try and run. And a six-yard gain gets him right around the 43.
Clock continuing to run. They'll probably wind this all the way before snapping it on second down. Now Watson off the bootleg. And this is caught by Fowles right side. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle comes at the Raiders' 24-yard line. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down. Stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. They're not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. Watson. And the tip there altered the ball flight, and it falls incomplete. It'll be second down. Really nice play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball, but for the guys on the offensive line, they're doing a nice job of trying to protect their passer. But when a guy hops in the air and goes airborne to try and knock one away, it's difficult because you can't reach out and grab him. That'll be a holding penalty. So all you're trying to do is make some type of a play on him, make some type of contact to try and get his arms out of the sky. We've got a one-score game with inside of two minutes remaining. So it's Texans football as we welcome you back. They're facing a critical third down now as they try to hold on to this lead. Back to the ground. This time it's high. And he's going to lose yardage and be backed up to the 25. So fresh out of the two-minute warning, and here's another timeout taken with 1.55 remaining. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to make it a two-score game. The kick by Fairbairn is good. And they double him up here. That makes our score 20 to 10. So his second field goal of the game, and that could turn out to be the big one. Yeah, you have to make him score twice to beat you, and that's not impossible. But here in the fourth quarter, puts their backs clearly against the wall. Fairbairn now following the made field goal. He'll send this one away. This fielded at the two. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. So Carr and the Raiders now down 20 to 10. A minute 47 on the clock. It's been a struggle to score all day, and now they need to do it twice here late to have a chance. Man, that's trash. That's trash. Carr to throw. He's going to find and complete it to Renfro. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That one good for 13 and a Raider first down. First down, Raiders. First down now, but that clock rolling. Mike 55, Mike 55. Back to throw, Carr. It's complete to Williams. And he'll go out of bounds, it appears, right at the 45. The completion good for three, and it's second down. Short play like that in this situation, this late, that's a win for the defense. No doubt. I remember something Coach Madden used to talk about all the time. Sometimes you can't just take what the defense gives you. You have to take what you need. And in this case, the offense is taking what the defense is giving them, not what they need. Throwing again on second down, but this time it's incomplete. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he'd been able to haul that one in. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. Now Carr. 
He's got his man. It's Williams. And he's going to be taken down with another first down as the stop's made at the Texans' 42. Like Antonio Brown, Tyrell Williams came to the Raiders in March. Came up the coast from L.A. where he caught 41 balls last year with the Chargers. His best year was 2016 when the Chargers were still in San Diego. Over 1,000 yards, 7 touchdowns, and the Raiders really have high hopes for this 27-year-old receiver. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight-yard gain, second and two. And there's another completion to the tight end. And let's face it, it is hard to overthrow a six-foot, six-inch target. <laughs> it is indeed. The quarterbacks like their speed guys. They like that huge six-six target that they've got in him. They really do. And it reminds me of what one great tight end told me once. He told his quarterback, just make sure you throw it up there. You know, kind of like put it up in the top shelf where the kids can't get it. to throw his car, and that'll be incomplete. Took a pretty good shot as he tried to pull that one in. Couldn't hang on third down. That pass just a little bit off. It looked like maybe he tried to force it in there. Game speed, always different, no matter what you do in practice. You can't simulate it, right? So your decision making, everything has to be a little bit quicker. Sometimes it can throw you off until you adjust. Carr looking to throw on third and two. It's caught, Jones. And that'll be enough to keep the drive moving forward. Another first down on the pickup of five yards. Now the Raiders gonna burn their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with an even 20 seconds left to go. Whether it's a touchdown or a field goal, whatever it is, they need to score quickly here on first down. Again, it's Carr. He'll find his tight end. That's Waller. The completion good for three, and it's second down. A three-yard pickup brings up second and seven at the 26-yard line. And Charles, you know what coaches always tell us. We want to win our home games. That much we know. We want to protect our home turf. They got that done in this one. Exactly right. When you start a season, everyone's goal. Win all of your home games, split your road games, and you're likely going to be in the playoffs. But when you win at home, boy, what a great feeling that is. You don't even mind if people are at your house when you get <laughs> home after a win like that. So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. It's a win for the Texans as we say so long from Houston.